Hello everybody,、uh, this is Bamboo with more stories of the Wild Man. This time I wanted to take a look at the Wild Man of China. Now here in North America, we know these creatures as the Bigfoot or Sasquatch. Other parts of the world have different names. If you go to Australia, they call them the Yawi. In Russia, they are known as the Almasti. In the Himalaya regions, they are called the Yeti. Now in China, they have been seeing these creatures, similar to Bigfoot, hairy ape-like creatures, seven to twelve feet tall, for thousands of years. Stories have been passed down for generations. They are called the Yeren in China, and I think it's very interesting looking around the world and seeing what stories they have of these creatures. Because I do think it has a lot to do with our history, as as people and where we came from. I came across an article from the Shanghai Star, came out about 20 years ago. On the trail of China's Bigfoot, North American skeptics take note. In 1976 to 77, the Chinese government sponsored a Yeren wild man, commonly known to the West as Bigfoot, expedition. To the Shenhanjia mountain forest in central Hubei province, consisting of 100 people, including army personnel. That trip and others have have produced numerous samples of what Yiwan Zhenjin, a well-known paleoanthropologist from the Chinese Academy of Sciences, claims are the hair, footprints, and feces of an undiscovered species, possibly the missing link. Between man and ape, the wild man. Eyewitness reports describe the wild man as about nine feet tall, with five-toed feet, measuring some forty centimeters in length, red hair, and terrible body odor. He is known, apparently, to be a vegetarian. Since the 1970s, government-sponsored expeditions. Have managed to detail scores of wild man sightings among local residents, although the wild man himself continues to shy away from both outsiders and cameras, complicating independent verification. However, scientists remain resolute in their investigations, according to an August 2nd, 1988 report in Shanghai's Wenhui Bao. An analysis of hair samples allegedly taken from the wild man prove he does exist, and wild man is not alone. Yi Wan believes some 1,000 to 2,000 of these Chinese Bigfoot creatures are currently roaming the dense forest of Hubei's mountain area. Interactions with locals have ranged from crude attempts at communication to encounters of a more personal nature. Yi Wan notes that he has personally investigated stories of abduction, including two cases where farmers were kidnapped by the creature, but managed to escape. Yi Wan fails to elaborate on the nature of these abductions, but according to victims of Wild Man's American cousin, the Bigfoot, the creature has a voracious sexual appetite. Some critics will inevitably attribute. These sightings to poisonous Western influences. However, they would be wrong. Reported sightings of the wild man date back thousands of years, before China had any contact with the West. A statesman poet named Qu Yuan, who lived in the third century B.C. in Shenanjia area, referred to mountain ogres in his verses. While a seventh century historian. Described a tribe of hairy men living in the same region, and an 18th-century poet spoke of a creature, monkey-like, yet not monkey-like, in the adjoining Shenzhi province. Liu Mizhuang, a biology lecturer in Shanghai, who has been researching wild man for more than 20 years, notes the convincing, convincing testimony of one old peasant. According to the elderly witness, he accompanied Kuomintang soldiers as they tracked eight wild men through thick forests for ten days 
in 1947. One wild man was eventually killed and dismembered by the soldiers, the peasants said. But records of the incidents were lost in the chaos of the Civil War. Such violent encounters may explain the wild man's reluctance to mix socially with the human species. Perhaps the wild man is a distant hominid cousin of Homo sapiens from some lost prehistoric era who has already survived tough lessons. Should it surprise us that the wild man would go to extremes to avoid contact? It's very fascinating. All over the world, they talk about these creatures. And when you look into these stories, there definitely has to be something there. I do thank all of you for listening in. Um, thank you very much. And have a blessed day or night wherever you're at. Bless up.